Welcome to Pure Hustle Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Orlando. And we're on another Monday mini-sode. Is there something different in our intro? I'm getting thrown off a little bit. Are you using different words? No, man. I'm using the same words. Same words as always. I just, uh, I think I'm coming in with more energy than you're coming. I'm okay. hyped. I'm hyped for this I, Monday I, mini. I'm a little tired. And if I, you am I, <laughs> it might be throwing you off a little bit. Yeah. So if you, if you haven't caught our last podcast, make sure you check it out. A lot of good info. I also talk about the flooding that I endured. Uh, and so I'm still recovering from that. So I'm a little tired, a little tired. Yeah. It's uh, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, but one of the things that can even take a tired reseller and make them energetic is sourcing. I mean, for whatever reason, we all just love to source. Uh, that is that is where the fun comes from, the treasure hunt, trying to find those items that are going to be profitable. And so today, we're going to talk about something we haven't talked about in a while, and that is uh, being successful sourcing at uh, thrift stores. Because we've talked about garage sales. We talk about garage sales pretty much every podcast. Uh, we talk about estate sales. We talk about local deals. We talk about eBay arbitrage. Uh, but thrift stores recently just have not been as profitable for a lot of people. Um, and if you want to, again, go back to our last Wednesday episode where we talk about some of the reasons why we think maybe there might be some shifts or some changes in that. And we might see some items that can be picked up at thrift stores at a decent price. Uh, but we're going to be talking about how to be successful at the thrift uh, because whether or not it's it's uh, gotten worse, uh, it is still a, a viable option for making money as a reseller. So uh, we are going to be talking about that today. Yeah. So the first thing, and, and I say this based on years of experience. So when you're a brand new reseller, you want to get out there, right? And, and you watch people on TikTok and you watch people on YouTube and, and on social media. And you're like, I'm going to hit every thrift store possible, right? So in the beginning, you may hit like five or six thrift stores in a day, right? And, and if you're trying to go full time, you may do that consistently. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you're always going to the thrift. Now, my my advice may be different than others. I know some people that say you should always be going to different thrift stores all the time. I think differently. Uh, my thoughts are you can waste a ton of time by doing that because what happens is if if you do it right, like if you spend a good amount of time at a thrift store, you find like a handful that are very profitable. And my belief is once you have found the ones that are profitable, you end up finding out that the other ones, it's just not worth driving out there anymore. It's not worth spending the time. And so you could be spending an hour or two at a thrift store and find nothing. Or you can go to the ones that you know will have profitable items and, and shift that time to that store and you'll walk out with even more profitable items at that store. So my my first advice to be successful at the thrift is to work hard at just having a handful of, of positive stores. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't every once in a while venture out and check out the different stores again because things might change, right? You have to shift. But in my experience at least in San Diego, I have about 3 to 5 thrift stores I only go to. I will not go to any others. And the reason being is I know that every time I go there, it's worth my time. I will find profitable items. And the longer I'm there, the more items I will find. Where if I just say, you know what, I'm going to plan a road trip. I'm going to hit 20 stores. I may be wasting my time at 10 to 15 stores. Now, what are, what are your thoughts on that, Mike? You think it's better to just focus on some or is it better to just, you know, go out there and just see what's out there? Yeah, I mean, I think I think you need to uh, to know your area. Focus on the ones that are going to be the most profitable for you. Uh, but there's always room to uh, to to check out if there's going to be changes. Maybe a store that was profitable becomes less profitable and a store that was not profitable becomes more. So I would say it's, you know, using that 80 20 rule or something like that, like 80% of the time, you should probably be doing the stuff that that is going to make you most of the money. Uh, and then 20% of the time, you know, use that for research, figure out, try some new places every once in a while. So I would say the vast majority of your time should be at the places you know you could be successful at. Uh, you know the situation, you know the deals, you, you're familiar with it. Uh, maybe it's because it's close. Maybe it's just a geographical you know, yeah, advantage yeah. that you're not driving as far. Uh, but I do think it is also a good idea to to, to spread out occasionally. But that shouldn't be your focus, right? Uh, our next one is establishing a pattern. So uh, when you get into a thrift store, a lot of times, if you know the thrift stores you're going to, this is very helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't know a thrift store, you kind of got to figure out maybe a new pattern. But you want to check certain places first. Maybe for you, uh, you're you're really good at uh, vintage toys. And so you're going to get straight to the, the hard goods section. You're going to go through the toys. 
Uh, and then after you look at some toys, then you know to go to shirts, then you know to go to shoes, right? Um, or you know, at certain times of the day, like they stock in the morning, uh, they're going to be stocking shoes. And then as the day goes, they start to stock, you know, more hard goods. So you kind of start there. Uh, it, you just kind of have to have a pattern where you go because it makes what you do um, consistent. And a lot of times, even just having a set pattern for you, even if it's the same store to store, which is like, I always start with shoes or I always start with electronics. That way you're not just meandering uh, kind of aimlessly. Having yeah. some kind of a, a structure, some kind of a focus system is going to ensure that you're not missing anything. It's going to ensure that you get to the areas that you maybe know well uh, first. I mean, I would hate to go into a store. It's like, I know, I know electronics. Like electronics are my thing. But you don't go there first because you're like, oh, the shoes are right here. I'm going to check this out. And then you see somebody like 10 minutes later, like walked in after you walk out with a cart with like some, you know, uh, grail item in their cart. And you're like, no, I can't, that could have been mine. So go to the places, you know, uh, you know, find the profitable items, but have a have a, a, a pattern. Once you get in the store, it's going to be very, very helpful for you. No, I, I agree. And, and this kind of goes in, in line with with our next one, the idea that, you know, once you establish that pattern, right, be consistent in visiting that store because once you have that pattern, right? So for example, my my pattern generally is I go to shoes first, even though I don't sell as many shoes, uh, I I know what shoes are there, right? If I'm consistent at that thrift store, right? And I know now how to select the higher item shoes where before I would pick up, like, I don't even pick a Merrill shoes anymore. Like I, I've just stopped because the margins aren't that great anymore. Uh, I don't, I don't pick up as many. I'm at feet. So I stopped picking them at feet. So, uh, I I'll pick up some Olukai every once in a while, but see, I know my shoes. Right. And, and, and so I'll still go and follow that pattern, but I'm at that store consistently. Cause what happens is you begin to notice gaps or you begin to notice something different, right? If, if you keep saying the, the, the same shoes time after time, you're going to recognize when those shoes disappear and they're replaced with a new pair. Or you're going you're gonna to recognize when, you know, you're, let's say it's toys, right? You're always seeing the same toys, but when those toys are removed and you see new toys put in place, you're going to be more apt to recognize those toys. And so you're going to see uh, when new items are going to be brought out. You're going to be able to uh, recognize maybe there's a markdown. It's just going to be a lot easier for you to notice when there's good inventory. Because what happens if you're not consistent, and this has happened to me before, is you'll go to that thrift store and you'll you'll find yourself researching the same items that you researched last time. And you'll go like, whoa, I just wasted so much time. I knew these were here, but it had been so long since I've been to the store. You know, I, 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 I totally forgot that I already had researched these items. And so you want to be consistent so you can see the gaps you can see the change in inventory. Uh, you can kind of see the fluctuation in prices and you can adapt accordingly. So make sure you're consistent. That's good. And um, another one, and we've talked about this in very various aspects, whether it's sourcing garage sales or estate sales or or even just shipping. But uh, it, it is amazing to me how many people uh, don't know how to be friendly. Uh, mm -hmm. Be friendly to the people you're you're dealing with, whether that's your shipper, whether that's a person at a garage sale, or it's the staff at a at a thrift store. Now, I get that a lot of people become resellers because maybe uh, they're a little more introverted. They don't want to deal with people. Uh, but the reality is, like, if you have to take an acting class for a, a few, you know, nights in the summer to figure out how to like put on the face and and do a couple of small, t you know, chat things and and seem to be personable, like, do what you got to do because you will. The amount of opportunities that open up when you're a personable person, when you can be friendly to the people around you. Um, you know, I, I always, I will always remember when I first started reselling at one of the thrift stores that were in the area that you used to frequent a lot, Orlando, mm -hmm. uh, the people knew you, I was new to reselling, but they knew that I knew you. And so when I would come in, they would stop me and like, Oh, are you interested in this? Are you interested? And they, the, the workers would start to show me things. And so, um, I remember thinking like, man, like Orlando has definitely set up a, a reputation here and the people know him and, and it has obviously worked out to his benefit. And the same things have happened to me at at thrift stores, um, at garage sales, at just other places I source at is when somebody knows you, they see you, you're friendly, you say you say hi. It allows you to ask the question like, hey, do you have any more of these in the back? Right. Like if you go to a thrift store and, and again, a lot of times the the employees, they're not always happy to be where they're at. Not, I mean, think about when you're stuck in a nine to five job, like a lot of people don't aren't always happy and eager to be there. So one, make their life a little easier. And two. If you say like, hey, 
you know, there's three of the four of these items sitting out here. And I know it's supposed to be a set. Could you go, you know, would you mind checking to see if, you know, one didn't get brought out? You know, if there's some profitable furniture item or something. If if you are just a, a pain in their butt consistently and they know that, they, they're, they're not going to do anything for you. Mm-hmm. But if you've been in there before, you've been friendly to them, you say hi, you say excuse me, you say thank you, all those things. You'd be surprised at how much those little things can go into your favor and actually cause somebody to go the extra mile for you. And maybe it doesn't pay off this time. And everything doesn't have to be transactional. It's not like I was nice to you today. Therefore, I expect something back next time. But over the course of you sourcing at a place for for weeks, months, years, uh, you eventually it's going to it's going to pay off. Right. It's going to pay off in one way or another. And if nothing else. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything and you probably made somebody's life better. But you'd be surprised at how many times when somebody knows like you're the guy who always wants to buy the Legos or you're the guy that always buys the whatever. They might be like, hey, we just got some in the back right now. We don't even have them out on the floor yet. You know, do you want to you want to come look at them? So be that guy. Be the person who's who's going to be kind, respectful, polite uh, and, and just realize that you can make the difference between somebody going home and being upset and angry or just having a blah day. And, and maybe you, you make somebody laugh. Maybe you're the guy that goes in and just has a dumb dad joke every time you're in there. You know, you just do the like, who knows, right? Like, you're just yeah, the yeah. person that makes somebody but have a good day there, and, and it, it works. I, I got to tell you, it's it. people are missing out. People have no idea what is going on behind the scenes. I mean, I can tell you, I know right now resellers have such good relationships with the thrift stores that the thrift stores, as soon as something comes in that is in that person's niche, they'll set it aside for that person. That thing will never hit the sales floor. And I know a lot of people get mad on social media, but that's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's just the way it is. Like people went out of their way. They established these relationships. Now, if there's an exchange of money and so on, then I think there's a problem. I think there's some, you know, it's it, that, that to me is kind of shady. But if you have a, you know, if you have a good relationship with people and, and they recognize that you're always going to buy from them. I mean, I remember someone, uh, they had a great relationship and they always were looking to get like remotes. And so they would call it, you know, they relationship, they had a relationship with these stores and they said, Hey, I need these remotes. And so this store every, at the end of every month, this individual would go store to store to store to store and all the remotes were there. He would just buy them and that's it. And so those stores never saw the light of day. And that's just, I think that's what's separating some resellers because I've heard of people, bad mouth individuals that make deals with, with uh, the thrift stores, but some thrift stores, they don't want to put it out on the floor. And I'm not talking about just the individual employee. I'm talking about full on organizations that they don't want to hassle with it. You know, that saves time from their employees having to focus on those items. They can focus on other items. And so they're willing to establish that friendship with you. I mean, there's I, I can name so many different genres that that happens to out here in San Diego. All right. And, and this last one, uh, you know, I don't know where people land on this, but. I have found usually when stuff is on sale, it's most of the time it's not the good stuff. The good stuff is generally the stuff that isn't on sale yet. And so I always recommend to people that if it's very profitable, buy it when you're in the store. Don't wait. You know, I do, I do know there are shady people that take items and put them under the floorboards or they'll hide them, you know, they'll hide a shirt inside of a jacket or whatever it is. But the reality is, if something is priced and it's priced at a profitable time and there's a sale in three days, it's not going to be there in three days, right? You're, you're thinking, oh, no one's going to touch it. Maybe somebody else will come in and touch it, right? And, you know, on sale days, everybody's trying to get the stuff that's on sale. So instead of, you know, when everybody's moving left, maybe if you move right, you'll find those better deals. And I find that some my best sales generally have been from thrift stores have been items that were not on sale that people wanted it for less and I just ended up paying a little more and I ended up selling the item. And by the way, we don't have a lot of sales in San Diego. So, you know, the few stores that we do go to have sales, stuff moves really fast. Now, uh, what are your thoughts? You think you should, you should wait on a sale? Or are you like, no. hey, I'm going to buy right on the spot? No, I mean, usually not. I mean, uh, I think the only, you know, the only exceptions to that would be like if you're on the fence, you're like, this isn't, quite profitable for me yet you know but if it goes on to 50 percent, you know off then at that point i would be able to really okay. turn a profit yeah. on this uh then it, you know if it's if it's not a if, if you can't really guarantee to make profit now if it does if it's not in your your range of what you're comfortable with yeah wait 
Um, and then if you don't get it, no skin off your back, right? You don't lose anything by, by you know, not getting it because you wouldn't have been profitable getting it in the first place. But if it's already profitable for you, chances are somebody else is going to recognize that it's already valued at a, a decent price and that or undervalued. And so you should you should pick it up. So definitely don't wait uh, because a lot of times the reason why things go on sales at sale at places, unless it's a place that just they don't really care. So they do like no matter what shoes will always be this on this day and this will be. And, and it's just to get people in the door. But usually when it's like the yellow tags will be on sale on this day and then next week, it's like now it's pink tags. They do that because the, that item has already been in sitting in their store for so long. Nobody's picked it up. And if people aren't picking up, yeah, maybe somebody's missed it. But chances are it's because it's not necessarily as profitable. Yeah, agreed. agreed. So hopefully this all helped you. This might be part one of two. We're not sure. Uh, we just wanted to get the ball rolling. You know, we haven't talked about thrift stores in a long time because we found that they just weren't profitable for us, at least in San Diego. But, you know, things have changed. Mike's in Texas. And I'm finding that things are changing here in San Diego. And so hopefully this all got you started on at least finding some way to be profitable at thrift stores. And with that being said, make sure to be real. Be relevant. And be reselling. Peace. Peace.